the Realty Debate. Last week, we brought you the findings of the Real Estate Attractiveness Report by Prop Equity, which demonstrated, based on hard facts of supply, demand, housing, houses sold, and the unsold stock, on how the capital's realty markets have nosedived almost to the bottom of the 14 cities across India. However, there also emerged a very big dichotomy. Almost all our panelists agree that today NCR is the best market from an investment point of view. Historically as well, NCR has given you the maximum returns compared to any other city across the country. So today our aim on the Realty Debate is simple, to find out why this is happening and what's the way out of this log jam. How do you make sure that NCR once again becomes the investor's darling? So, that's the realty check that we will be doing. Let me introduce my panelists today. Naveen Raheja, CMD Raheja Developers Limited and Chairman of Naretko. Ar Arjun Puri, MD Puri Constructions. Mohit Arora, Managing Director, Supertech Limited. Ashutosh Limai, National Director, Research, JLL India. And Samir Jasuja, Founder and MD of Prop Equity. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me today. I am just going to read out a few highlights of that report to just viewers have to be abreast of what we are talking about and then get on with the debate. Now, NCR market has been in a state of inertia for quite some time now, at least for the last two years. 2014, though, has been termed in the Prop Equity Report as the worst year in terms of residential demand and supply. Stagnant growth in income, high interest rates, late project deliveries cumulatively have held back the buyers. Now, developers, on the other hand, have been restricted by the increasing burden of construction cost land and labor costs which are not allowing for cutting down prices. Therefore, the big inventory overhang. Residential new launches and absorption levels were at the lowest level since 2009 and we are talking about 2014, that's the year gone by, at only 54,000 units, 50 units above that and 37,650 units respectively. Final figure, year-on-year -year comparison during 2014, total absorption more than halved it dropped by 50% to just about 37,000 units from almost 80,000 units in 2013. So there was a huge slide even between 2013 and 2014. Unsold stock stood at 264% higher compared to 2013. So, so lots and lots of unsold stock which went up by 23% in NCR between 2013 and 2014. Now, my big questions are what's really going on in the market. There, there are, of course, there are developer issues, there are buyer issues, and then there are NGT or the National Green Tribunal issues. So, I mean, sum it all up for us and tell us, you know, 2014 just looks so bad. Why? Well, there are multiple reasons for that. I think the first, first and foremost reason is that the economy still has to start uh, recovering. I think uh, the Modi government is trying to do uh, the necessary steps, but uh, it will still take a while before the economy starts to show real effect on the ground. That's the first and foremost reason. The NCR market is investor driven. Uh, the investors haven't seen too much of a return in the last two, two and a half, three years. And they kind of have uh, fled from the market. Either they are stuck badly and they're not being able to get liquidity or they're not willing to make fresh bets because they're not feeling that they're going to get the right kind of return going forward. The end users are waiting on the sidelines, waiting to waiting for the markets to crack up further, uh, primarily because they feel that the markets have seen a drop of 20 to 30 percent in various uh, areas in NCR. So they feel that there is a higher probability that the markets may go down uh, in the next coming few months as well. Uh, the developers uh, are a little cash trapped right now, so they are all being able to offer uh, good deals. And the investors who had got stuck in the market are also willing to offer and offload the inventory that they're holding at much lower rates. Okay, all right. So you've some, some of the reasons. Some of the reasons. I, I just thought Samir would take about 45 minutes and wrap it all out for us. But uh, Naveen Raheja. <laughs> Naveen Raheja, let's, let's hear the developers talk about it as well. Would you, would you agree and accept that last two years probably have been the worst that developers have also seen from a demand point of view in real estate of the NCR region? Working since last over 30 years in this area now, NCR. Mm -hmm. Never seen this kind of thing happening. Okay. Happening, so, you know. So, this so is the you... longest, longest stagnation mm -hmm. of reality market I've seen in my life. Okay. Reason uh -huh. and users 
purchasing power does not match with investors speculative expectation simple ah, okay i think i think you've summed it up very well arjun puri what's your take now he's saying speculators who were in the market are trying to offload but obviously there are no takers for that price so i'm i'm assuming that investors would have moderated their return expectations and developers also would have moderated at what price should they be launching new projects at that. see i think it's not it's not as easy as that i i i have a slightly different take on this mm -hmm. i feel there hasn't been anything for the end user really to come into the market immediately because the projects of a lot of developers are not ready they are still about a year or two away from completion for a lot of developers and the infrastructure has also not kept pace with what was promised so if we were all expecting certain infrastructure projects to be completed you know 2 to 1 and a half years ago those are at a point which are getting they are probably coming now into shape and they'll probably be ready in the next 6 months to 1 year so the investor has not been able to find an end user to offload to because the end user feels that it's still premature for him to come in okay i feel now we are at an absolute you know inflection point i feel we are at the cusp of a change because i feel a lot of infrastructure projects in the ncr are coming to the culmination they are getting delivered uh, i think a lot of developers have not you know even in the slowdown uh, you know developers such as mr raheja asked a lot of other developers have not stopped construction okay. you know we've kept construction going so i think where a lot of us are 6 8 months a year away from offering possession and i think a lot of infrastructure is getting completed so i think end users will start coming in in the next 6 8 months and i think investors will find that they will have you know end users to offload to all right so that's a good gaon and dwarka expressway market let me get mohit in here and ask mohit as well mohit so this is one market and i must say when it came to investors and speculators probably good gaon had a larger number than the some of the areas or key areas that you operate on which are the noida greater noida yamuna expressway of course you've just launched in good gaon as well tell me in in noida was it always not also an end user driven market and and are the end users also on the sideline waiting for a price correction what has your sense been in the last two years of sales being slow uh, is it that this end user has completely disappeared from the market uh, i agree with you manisha uh, uh, as you rightly said the uh, investors are completely vanished from the market for us at least uh we are we are operating both in gurgaon uh, and noida region but uh, the better part in noida what we see here is that there is lot of uh, end user uh, who are looking for uh, uh, their own houses to live in they are not uh, uh, they are not so much interested in speculation and appreciation so most of our customers who are buying into noida are end user and they are looking for their own use that's a that's a healthy sign for the for a, a market like noida for the because of the same reason uh, there is not much appreciation and not much uh, uh, speculation happening in noida market the prices has been stagnant since last 2 uh, uh, years almost so there is uh, hardly any price increase in this market as i said because there is no speculators in the market there are no investors okay but more uh, my question to uh, you th was the are there end no users or even end users have gone down what has been your sense i mean in the last 5 years was it that you had investors between 2009 and 13 and from 13 onwards you had investors disappearing is that how we should read the noida greater noida yamuna expressway markets as well exactly uh, that's what i was explaining that there 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 are hardly any uh, investors in this market these days Ma uh, investors vanished after i would say 2012 and 13 uh, uh there are mostly end users in the noida market and uh, that is the reason there are there is there is no speculation there is no appreciation uh, we can take it as it, there are both sides of the situation one is good and bad uh, good is that the the the, the market is healthy uh, people pay on time uh, projects are getting delivered uh, developers are uh, developers getting money to construct the project uh but on the other side the bad side is there are as there are no appreciation no speculators uh the market is going slow since last 2 uh, years 
Okay. And uh, it's the slow. I, I would say it's the slowest pace this market could be at. All right, fair enough. So now I think everybody has accepted that it is an extremely slow market, the worst probably they've seen in two decades. Now, Ashutosh Limai from GLL actually has sent us this interesting article. When we are talking about NGT, in fact, when we are talking, sorry, when we are talking about Noida uh, within the NCR market specifically, the National Green Tribunal clamping down on work around 10 kilometers radius around the Okla Birth Sanctuary hasn't helped either. And of course, the latest order where they're saying the developers are not following the NGT order of uh, clean construction and therefore adding to the air pollution and therefore construction should stop. So Ashutosh, this has really, really been another big reason which has added to the already troubled market, isn't it? I think quite a bit, Manisha, uh, because uh, what happens is whenever uh, such order uh, or direction uh, comes in force, uh, sentiment uh, indeed does get uh, affected. Uh, there were two uh, different orders uh, which, which uh, we are speaking now. One was about the bird sanctuary related order and the second one was uh, about the uh, uh, environmental pollution control norms related uh, order. Uh, so what happens is uh, in, in, in the bird sanctuary uh, case, uh, when, when the, uh, completion certificates were uh, stopped, uh, it affected the secondary markets first uh, because most projects were uh, either completed or in advanced stage of construction. Uh, so it, it was uh, a case where uh, buyers were already present in, in that market. They had purchased the properties uh, and investors who had purchased to uh, sell it off uh, and, and uh, exit had problems because completion certificates uh, were not uh, forthcoming. And, and that uh, affected uh, subsequently the primary market as well. Uh, because as an end user, uh, one uh, gets jittery when uh, completion certificates are not forthcoming, which then lead into delays of projects uh, and, and the sentiment uh, hurts. Uh, whereas the second order, which was related uh, to uh, stopping of construction itself uh, because of uh, uh, violation of pollution control uh, norms, uh, that actually uh, made the situation worse uh, because uh, everybody knew that uh, delays are going to be much more common. And for developers also it was a pain point because the holding cost uh, goes up, they have to shell out the penalty as well. Uh, both, uh, I think, uh, orders uh, affected uh, the uh, sentiment uh, uh, quite a bit. And, and we have seen uh, that uh, sales have further dropped. They were not good in first place and, and they, uh, they did get uh, dropped further. And, and people uh, actively thought of Ghaziabad and Faridabad as alternate locations to Noida because of uh, this uncertainty. Okay. Fair enough. So we've, we've established that there are many, many issues. Now the big question is, and Samir, you have to come here. There's a lot of data in front of me and I'm not going to, you know, push out all the data, but look at NCR. It's a huge market, the largest in the country, way ahead of Bangalore. We say Bangalore's number one, but the launches here, the projects here or the units here are three times of Bangalore. What is the number? Actually, uh, or, or more. And not any more. Okay. These were numbers of 2011 and 2012 when we were witnessing uh, new launches at the rate of about 150,000 units overall in NCR. Uh, but now it's dropped down to, as we say, 39,000, 40,000. That is lesser than Bangalore. That's lesser than Bangalore. Yeah. So what is so 2014? What did Bangalore launch and what did NCR launch? So if you were to look at uh, 2014, uh, the numbers of launches in the NCR region were to the tune of 65,000. Okay. And Bangalore was roughly about at 50,000. All right. So, so the gap is closing. You're saying yes. Bangalore and NCR, new launches are becoming almost the same. And geographically, probably NCR, NCR is, much is, is a much, much larger market. And that itself spells out Noida trouble. Noida alone, just, just let me add here that Noida alone, Noida, Great Noida alone was probably equal to in 2011, 2012, uh, was equal to the entire top tier one cities put together. Okay. That's the kind of new launches we were talking about. All right. So, so then let's stick to or come to the demand supply situation. From a demand supply situation, look at the micro markets around NCR and which one seems to be the most under pressure, Samir, and which one seems to be okay and be able to hold its head above water. See, uh, if you look at it from a short term point of view, uh, Dwarka Expressway is uh, feeling a lot of pain. Mm. I think uh, if you start looking at Noida Expressway, there's too much supply that is almost getting ready and uh, going to get ready. There are about 150,000 units going to be ready on just Noida Expressway. That is going to see pain because right now there is, as uh, Arjun pointed out, there's a lot of completion that is yet to happen. 
And what we've witnessed uh, in the NCR markets is that the market is not as deep as we felt it was, especially in micro markets like Gurgaon, where 3,000, 4,000 apartments came up and rentals became just half. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that is one cause of concern that I'm seeing in Noida because uh, unlike what Mohit said, that there are a lot of end users in Noida, which I agree with, but the kind of supply that came up in Noida was purchased a lot by investors All as right. well. Okay, so let me get the developers here. Mr. Raheja, do you believe or you said that look, uh, investors' expectations were way more than what the end user was willing to pay. So are we staring at a problem which is essentially that demand is for another product and what developers have been launching is a completely different product? See. And, and, and to upon, that I would probably come to the pricing right, question. Right. Uh, upon, have we oh, outpriced real estate in the national capital region? Based upon my experience of lifetime, now almost three decades, actual market dynamics is decided by the purchaser and the occupier, okay. that is the tenant even. Whether the return the investor gets or the, even the owner gets from a tenant justifies the investment made by him in the unit and what is the occupancy possibility? Number two, whether the purchaser has the power or the disposable income and means to buy and to afford that kind of unit, be it residential or commercial, whatever, mm -hmm. whether affordable or upper segment. Mm -hmm. Upper segments, at times, you do get uh, some variation because of the branding of the product. But right. actually speaking, the projects are demand based. They are straight connected to the, you know, customers' pockets and occupancy. No, no. So, are you saying, Mr. Raheja, that developers have in, not gone between, wrong in launching uh, the in, product? Uh, You're saying between, that the markets, they could not anticipate the market falling, yes, but the product yes, is right. It is an oversupply. Arjun Puri, Arjun Puri, would it, you is agree? A, it is an oversupply. It is All an right. oversupply. Okay. So you're saying but, but since as, as already mentioned, last two years, supply in Gurgaon has been much, much less than what it used to be. So the gap is almost completed now. The only last hitch which is left out about Dwarka is the area, particularly in Gurgaon, which is most affected is the infrastructure connectivities. Okay. Infrastructure connectivities are most probably going to take shape now. All right, and so you're, you're talking about Dwarka Expressway. Okay. As they, no, no, I'm talking about the uh, complete Gugam and NCR market itself. Because right. I, my take is, it is, what is the, you know, uh, pocket of the customer? And what is the supply available? It is demand and supply which decides the price. In between, there may be but investors. Mr. Raja, are you there resting your investors. case? Are you resting your case saying that there is no mismatch between demand and supply today, in terms of the pricing that you today, developers have today, matched the market for? Today, fine? the prices are much below than what they should be actually. But unfortunately, the you know, actual occupancy rate is not picking up. Okay, Manisha, Ajay, I Puri, add... oh, no, hold okay, on. I, I need other first. people to, okay. <laughs> I need other people to also come in. You can come in later. Uh, Arjun Puri, would you agree with this statement that developers have been, you know, have, uh, have actually predicted the market okay? It's just that the economic environment has been so negative that that's the reason why things are not selling? Because that's what I heard from Mr. Rahecha. Yes. I think I think we've got it pretty much right. I mean, if you if you just take a comparative, hmm. uh, you know, societies in Dwarka today are uh, on an average a three-bedroom apartment, fifteen hundred odd square feet, is for a crore eighty to two crores. Hmm. Now, the average apartment that one is talking about on Dwarka Expressway is you know a crore twenty to a crore and a half. You know, maximum uh, that's that's the range that people are selling at. So I don't think developers have got it wrong. It's just that the infrastructure has not kept pace. So the Dwarka Expressway has been delayed by at least two years and that's why people have not been able to move in. Now even a settlement... On, even in ready projects, nobody is willing to move in. There's no social infrastructure or an expressway. Well, till the, uh, till the expressway is a reality, which we are seeing now because as I was sharing with you, a settlement has been reached between the parties and very soon in the next six months, we should see the actual expressway taking form. And I feel that 
people will definitely migrate from dwarka because those societies really are let, not let me come to that a little later arjun sure. i think the the question that i really needed an answer to was a demand and supply mismatch happens when either the product is wrong or there is an economic environment which has gone completely Nisha, wrong so all of you are claiming I'll that just, the economic environment has gone wrong the I'll just pro- add, I'll just product one is more, right yeah i'll just add one more one more point if you ask any real estate leasing broker today in gurgaon any senior leasing uh, broker he will tell you this that there is a desperate gap between demand and supply of commercial ready to move in offices there are there is a huge demand for ready to move in offices right now in gurgaon right now as these office supplies get absorbed and all these companies start moving in definitely more and more residential demand will be created which needs to be filled up okay samir would you agree uh, am i am i hearing you right uh, arjun that you're saying that there is a glut in commercial there's a lot which needs to be filled up and as it is filled up you'll have residential demand is that what you're saying i am i am saying there's a huge demand for commercial i'm saying and there's, there's not no, enough commercial there's available not, there's not I, enough i i disagree ready, with there's that there's not enough ready commercial there available there are enough boards that i've seen for the last 6 months which are saying ready for fit out and those buildings after buildings are lying vacant i'm not so sure about that samir what's your point of view so i just like to add to what everybody said you see what has happened is one good thing that has happened with the ncr market is that the developers have launched enough and more projects there is supply that has got created in the market at affordable price points when i'm talking about affordable price points i'm talking about with respect to today for the next 3 years right and that supply has to slowly get picked up as the infrastructure catches up in those micro markets specifically like dwarka expressway when we talk about demand supply mismatch yes there has been a demand supply mismatch and economy has played a huge role in that also that developers kept on launching till the supply would stop till the demand would stop and there was no precedent to that please remember that 2011 and 2012 has seen more launches in the ncr region than the last 10 15 years put together mm. so there was no precedent that you know who would know how much demand is there in the market because there was no precedent okay. so so okay. that we're was the real to, case okay so i think that's a great data point to take a break on we're going to come back i think everybody and there were just so many new developers who decided buying land parcels launching projects in ncr which seems to be one of the most lucrative and most mouth watering real estate market is a great thing till every till the whole industry figured that probably the supply was way beyond the demand we're going to come back and now we're going to focus on just one thing what's the way out of this log jam and which are the markets which are actually going to come out or recover the fastest